In the past few years, Nigeria's uh, aviation industry has seen a massive growth uh, and is the best performing in Africa with lots of success stories so far. Uh, today on the breakfast, Christa, Christopher Mele and Kolawale Olua Nifemi of TechPoint Africa join us to discuss this and a forthcoming tech summit. We also look at the menace of delayed flights. It has been a constant fixture in Nigeria's aviation sector. Is there hope? of this becoming a thing of the past and of course what is the way forward for Nigeria's aviation sector. We'll have an aviation expert joining us later to discuss this. But we move straight to Off the Press where we bring you major um, analysis of major stories on today's newspaper headlines. So we sincerely apologize for bringing the program to you behind shadows due to circumstances beyond our control. But I'm glad to say we have Chris Kende Wandu, a chartered mediator and consulator, uh, joining us this morning to look at what the papers have to say and of course to give us his expert analysis as always. Mr. Wandu, very good morning to you and thank you very much for joining us. Good morning, thank you for having me. All right. And of course, uh, we have the following headlines. We'll delve straight into them. And later, we take Chris Kendi and Wandu's uh, uh, comments on them. We'll start off with a look at uh, what this day has to say uh, with the trending, trending, trending headlines in most of the papers being the countdown to Nigeria's 2023 general elections. The paper has a take on what the Labour Party's presidential candidate uh, has been saying, talking about Peter Gregory Obi. And you can see a picture of the man who himself uh, is uh, a ranking member of the Catholic Church right there uh, with some papal knights. Um, the headline goes, will be to Nigerians, I'll be in charge of Nigeria, hold me responsible. I'll be in charge of Nigeria, hold me responsible. Several writers to that story, he says he won't give excuses as president, but provide solutions. He is reiterating commitment to his commitment to transforming the nation and has outlined his agenda. He's declared uh, the era of borrowing for consumption is over. He's explained the delay in releasing his manifesto. Look, of course, lots of questions uh, come in regarding that. And he's clarifying that he didn't offer Kwan Kwaso, uh, the, the candidate, presidential candidate of New Nigeria People's Party, money to step down for him. Interesting one there. Um, more stories from this day. Adebanjo, it's Igbo's right to produce next president, says APC has disqualified Southeast. Nigeria's unity negotiable, Bola Ahmed posits. All right, uh, don't confuse that with uh, uh, Bola Ahmed. I should say Papa Ahmed, not Bola Ahmed. World Bank president, Nigeria in urgent need to strengthen fiscal management, harps on need to create unified, stable, market-based exchange rate. CUPP Lords Emefiele on Naira redesign alleges move by lawmakers to scuttle initiative. Uh, Shehu, lack of fiscal autonomy, funding gaps, threatening independence of RMAFC, and that's the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission. Details on page 10 of this day. To the next paper, the Punch in East paper, um, has uh, a focus on the aviation sector. It's looking at uh, the expected national carrier, and of course Nigerians looking forward to something as promised by the federal government. National carrier, FG Domestic Airlines legal battle kicks off Thursday. FG Domestic Airlines legal battle kicks off Thursday. The riders to that 10 lawyers to lead local airlines legal team, SEN's professors drafted, uh, Aviation Ministry Director leads government lawyers' plans to vacate in junction. And of course, um, it seems it's going to be a money rain for the lawyers out there um, whilst the government and the local uh, airlines will be doing the paying. Impeachment. New EKT Speaker Successor Differ. It's a well-documented story in EKT State, um, of course, uh, with the first female uh, Speaker of the House of Assembly right there. Uh, we'll look at that as we go on. Hoodlums invade Atiku rally, supporters injured. Uh, petrol, electricity, subsidies hurting poor, uh, poor Nigerians. World Bank uh, saying that. Presidency, North can't dictate to others, says Adebanjo. This is uh, the leader of the pan Yoruba social political organization, Afeni Fere. Ogun PDP, Supreme Court orders retrial. Party crisis worsens. 
Kidnappers attacked ex Akeridolu's aid, or we should say ex aid of Akeridolu, demand 100 million naira a ransom. And last one from the punch politicians will use dump you, IG warns policemen. I think that's a, a pertinent call. Politicians will use you and dump you, the IG warning policemen. Uh, not to take sides with politicians. The nation has some interesting headlines, a big one there, focus on 2023 elections and the PDP. Uh, why Atiku PDP will lose in 2023 by Kwankwa. So um, the man has been visiting uh, some states, storing some states to uh, you know, launch his campaign and all that. He says nobody can win a presidential poll without Lagos, Kanu, Rivers votes. No indication we will lose, a PDP tells NNPP candidate. Ekiti Assembly gets new speaker. I remain in office. I wonder, I wonder who is saying that. Is it the old speaker or the new speaker? You can read the paper uh, for details. World Bank advises federal government on fiscal adjustments. Uh, Saka scores brace in England win. Senegal lose to Holland. The World Cup ongoing in Qatar. And of course, uh, quite interesting matches already taking place so far. Ogun, NNPC to reconstruct Ogijo Shagamu Road, says Abionu, that's governor of Ogun State. And IG, Kogi no longer safe for criminals. Uh, 11 family members die of food poisoning. Really sad one, but those are stories coming from the nation. Let's quickly uh, take the last one, which is the leadership newspaper has. Um, some interesting headlines there, uh, but it's a different twist the paper is taking with its lead story from the other uh, papers this morning, and quite interestingly so. Uh, it focuses on the Constitution amendment uh, with a headline, Hope Rises as 16 States Vote for Local Government Autonomy. Hope Rises as 16 States Vote for Local Government Autonomy. The right is to that. Three states vote against. Adamo abstains. Eight states vote needed to overcome hurdle. CSO foresees favorable outcome. And for those who've forgotten, this process is still on. Governors meet on economy. NBS poverty report today. Um, that, uh, that groundbreaking report, if you want to call it that, that talked about um, multi-sectoral, multi-level uh, poverty in the country and the situation of the economy drawing uh, the attention of the governors. One only hopes that uh, the meeting will yield uh, some results. So more from the leadership. Police fall, kidnap attempt, rescue 76 victims in Kaduna. Don't fight for any politician. Sultan, C-A-N, that's Christian Association of Nigeria, advise Nigerians. Qatar 2022, England thrash Iran. Senegal lose to Holland. And we have uh, Ikidi Speaker impeached six days after six days in office. Quite a bizarre one. Uh, 2023, like he did for OB, Wike promises logistic support for Kwankwa. So we'll look at that um, as we go on. But Chris, um, let, let's start with the, the situation in Ikidi State. It's quite, quite, quite uh, worrying what's been happening there for some, but for others, they're seeing democracy play out. Uh, the Speaker of the House of Assembly there uh, died on the 19th of October, unfortunately, from cardiac arrest, and uh, he had to be replaced so that the business uh, of legislating could proceed in, in Akiti st State. Uh, God rest his soul. A new Speaker was elected. Uh, he beat his uh, counterpart uh, 15 to 10 votes. That's uh, making 25 votes in the House of 25 uh, members. He sat on that chair, uh, the Speaker's chair, for only one day because he was elected last week, Tuesday. On Wednesday, the police in Ekiti State sealed off the House of Assembly. What did they say? They said they were doing that to forestall a breakdown of law and order. According to them, they had some reports that certain persons were going to set the House of Assembly ablaze, and they didn't want that to happen. Uh, fast forward, six days later, yesterday, they impeached the man who was elected only six days ago and suspended him indefinitely and then uh, I think 17 members of the House of Assembly, uh, you know, elected, elected a new speaker. That uh, is what we have in the leadership newspaper. What are your thoughts on this? Is this just, you know, democracy at play? Or do you smell something that is uh, quite bigger than just ordinary democracy? Um, it is a no fact that the most slippery 
uh, political seats uh, under our democracy is always the uh, the seat of the Speaker of uh, State Houses of Assembly. It is within those uh, jurisdictions that you find out that even five, six um, uh, legislators can just sit together and impeach a speaker. It, and it all depends on the governor of the state. He can remove and, um, and get another one elected within 24 hours. That's how they rule. Because the legislative arm in the state has become a, a robust term of the executive, and it happens not just in the Kitty State, it has happened in several states, even in my state of Imo. If you recall some uh, months back, um, within the past, within one year or two, uh, Imo State House of Assembly had uh, three different speakers uh, for the House. What The one from my own village of Obo was removed some weeks back, and someone else was uh, uh, picked or elected to take over from him after he just he was on the saddle for less than one uh, one year. So what is happening in Ikiti is not it's just a play out of politics. Um, don't forget, as I rightly mentioned, that speaker was just elected. The former speaker was elected um, six days ago, but it seems that the powers that be we are not comfortable with his candidature. And about three days ago, he cried out on uh, one of the national TV stations that the former Ekiti State Governor, uh, 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 Karo um wants him removed and is doing everything humanly possible to, uh, to get him removed. Well, as we say in local parlance, which cry for night, picking bomb, uh, die for money. We don't know who kill him. So that was what happened. And um, just yesterday, he was removed. Um, 17 of his uh, colleagues voted against him and elected a new speaker. And she is going to be the first female speaker of Ekiti State House of Assembly. Don't forget that Ekiti uh, barely had, um, it's just about within, uh, about a month or thereabouts, that we have a, a new governor being sworn in in that state. Probably the new governor, too, feels more comfortable um, to have someone else in the saddle so that whatever program and whatever initiative we're putting together can easily be passed on by. But um, the man I had him last night, also the former speaker, saying that he's heading to Abuja, he wants to go and see the IG, blah, blah, blah. I wonder what the IG will do. IG is not in charge of uh, politics in a Kitty state. I would rather think that the legislative arm should come together and just work itself out and be able to do their job as it were. This speaker, a new sheriff, is on the saddle, and um, that is what it is. Very interesting indeed. The, um, the, the, the current new speaker, uh, uh, Olubumi, she's saying that there was some hanky panky as regards the election in Kitty State, and that um, uh, the 17 people vote she got yesterday, um, or the 17 members who came to vote her in, shows that. Um, it's not possible she, she could have gotten only 10 votes last week Tuesday. That that is the evidence. The fact that they are saying yesterday that they don't know how the the former speaker had 15 votes because they are saying they didn't vote for him. Do you think this is, is just an is just easy to, to determine um, in such a way that there was some there were underhand you know happenings and uh, was some sort of um, uh, uh, corruption or fraud in the voting that held last Tuesday? If you have said it, some people are calling the shots. It's not even the woman that is calling the shots. She's not the one. Once those that are calling the shots have picked somebody that they want as a speaker, that is it. She has no say. They determine the number of people that are going to vote and who to be voted for. She has no say. If they want her removed in the next 24 hours, she'll be removed and not and heaven will fall. That is how well our democratic system has gone. Um, there is no separation of power. There is supposed to be separation of power. We are the executive is supposed to be independent of the uh, judiciary as well uh, as well as the legislature. But what do we have? Um, we have a, a executive determine what happens in the legislature and even in the judiciary. We are the governor has to uh, at times have to appoint the chief judge or some judges in the state, um, irrespective of whatever NJC feels. Uh, what that appointment has been made. All well and good, and you come to realize that most of those judges will start dancing to the whisker caprice of the governor. The same thing with the legislative arm. 
And um, whatever the governor says is what they do. They are just there to rubber stamp the oversight function they don't do. They don't try to uh, look at the activities of the executive and see whether they are delivering the dividends of democracy to the people. So, and if you try to do that and try to uh, overdo yourself or overstretch yourself and believe you have that constitutional power, you are a gunner. So, as I said, um, make it have a new um, speaker. Let's just wait and see how long she will last. All right, let's see with the leadership. Um, it, it wasn't long ago, Chris Kenny wondered with that. Um, uh, sympathizers or supporters i don't mean to say sympathizers in a negative or derogatory way but people who are sympathetic and also those who support the labor party's uh presidential candidate uh, mr peter gregory will be uh were in, in jubilant mood following the declaration announcement by Yenson wiki <laughs> governor of uh, river state that um he he was going to lend his support to the the gentleman in question the candidate in question not just his support the support of river state government that he was going to devote the resources of government um to provide logistic support for peter gregory b and the labor party whenever they embark on presidential can, um, um, uh, um, campaigns in river state only presidential campaigns in river state and this caused you know you know people to go online to say wiki is for b River State is for B, 2 million votes guaranteed. Because you look at the 200,000 uh, special assistants Wiki has uh, recently uh, employed, you know, with River State government money. The calculation by some is that each, if each of them brings 10 votes for him, it means that whoever Wiki is supporting will get 2 million votes guaranteed. Um, fast forward to yesterday. The, the presidential candidate of the New Nigeria People's Party, uh, Dr. Rabi Musa Kwanko, who was in River State uh, to commission a project uh, in a place called Mbutanwo in Emoha, local government area of River State. I know the place quite well. And Wiki also promised him, like he did, Obi, uh, we'll give NMPP logistic support whenever you come to River State for campaign. Just let me know, and I will do the needful. Um, <laughs> Chris Kedon wonder where, where the supporters of uh, Peter B too too quick uh, to to jubilate. I take everything that um, Governor Wiki say with, like a pinch of salt. I I I, tend, I don't tend to believe it. Um, it's only when it, it, you just want to mess yourself that you believe whatever Wiki say. And if you start um, analyzing what Wiki said prior to the. Uh, presidential primaries of the PDP um, earlier in the year, and what he now started saying after that primaries, then you will not believe, you will not look at it from the point that Don Wike is not a man of his words. Uh, you cannot, you, you, you cannot uh, love two women in the same way. In as much as in, the, in Islam, um, a man is allowed to marry four wives, but within that Quran too, the Quran said that you must treat four of them equally. So um, when Obi went to uh, court and weekly uh, promising his support, I think Obi was too quick to, to believe um, uh, yes, Obike, that he even went as far as making a commitment that, well, we will support you for the governorship, just leave the presidency for us. That was uh, what Obi told Wike. Uh, but from all indications, um, Kopansu was in uh, River State yesterday and Mike promising the same thing. What I can see from all this is that it's obvious that Mike and his camp have not fully left the PDP. They are leaving their door open. What it means that if for any reason they reconcile themselves, the so called G5 or G, whatever they call themselves, tomorrow, there's a tendency that they will align their support with the PDP. So all these uh, promises. It's just like blinking to a beautiful woman in the dark. It's only you that know what you are doing. She doesn't know what you are doing. Let these politicians not take Mike seriously and uh, with what he's saying. How many people you promise logistic support? Uh, we came for, uh, to you and you promised that you're going to give him logistic support. What person came to you, you promised him logistic support. If tomorrow you reconcile with uh, within the PDP and that you come back, comes to you, you will also promise him logistic support. And don't forget, that even during the week, last week, the former chairman of APC, 
uh, Adam Shoshomole was in Potter Court, the River State to commission some projects. And some of them also heard what Wike said and what Adam Shoshomole said at that day. It was at that meeting, at, at that uh, ceremony, that Wike apologized to Adam Shoshomole for supporting Governor um, um, Obaseke during the last gubernatorial election in a state. states. So that is the kind of person, the kind of politics uh, Governor Wike is playing. So uh, make them not take them seriously. Let them continue going on their campaign, campaign for themselves, and make sure that they get the necessary vote. If you rely on Wiki as somebody that you can depend on uh, to get you the vote in 2023, now one, one chance with that. Yeah, like, like we, yes, and Wiki had said uh, 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 some time ago, I think he likes to say, Yendeba, Yendeba. Yendeba, uh, Yendeba. Uh, <laughs> Yendeba, 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 means I give you and you give me. I give you, these people. You give. So that's, that, that is language. Don't forget that. Don't forget the, 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 the music too. As if they switch to us, that's why they pay them. <laughs> but, 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 but in all of this, some people have, have coined it, though it's not exactly, you know, the, 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 the pure definition of it, but some have, some have called it hybrid politics. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, this concept of um, uh, a candidate saying, okay, I'm going to support, like Obi said, uh, I won't support my party's governorship candidate for the, I will support another candidate's uh, a party's candidate for governorship while they support me for president. Or we can say, okay, um, it's PDP for governorship, but for presidency, no. I'm going to support other people, any party but PDP. Some call it hybrid politics, and uh, you know what are your thoughts on that? You have, for instance, I know, I know from the grapevine, or from sources. Sorry, Chris Gendy, I know that with all the visits uh, by APC stalwarts to River State, uh, Femi Baja Bermila has commissioned a project. Adam Soshemule has commissioned the project. Uh, Governor Babajide Sawalu of Lagos here, uh, Rotimi Akeri Delu and Co. I've been going to Yeson Wiki's sprawling mansion or estate at Ada George Rich Pod Pod Harcourt. Um, the APC members of River State probably are crying that hey, they've not visited us. They've not even come to a sectorate. Or, neither have they met a party's uh, a candidate. You know. For the Labour Party, the, the, the governorship candidate who was offered you know, to wiki on a platter of gold. She was sick. Um, she was, um, she had a domestic accident and she was ill. The pictures all over the internet. You see her, her left leg cast in uh, POP and she's using crutches. Her name is Beatrice Tubo. She's a long time chairperson of, of uh, NLC in River State. And the APC press governorship candidate paid her a visit and took a picture with her. And the APC members are using it to taunt Obi and his supporters to say, see, you abandoned your 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 candidate in 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 River State. So what what do you, what do you say about this whole hybrid politics of a thing? What we can do is not hybrid politics. That is anti-party activities. That is the right word, Kofi. That is not. You cannot leave your party and come to Lagos and say that you are you are a governor of PDP and you come to Lagos State and say that um, you are supporting an APC governorship candidate in the person of Orange Day. So when you have a PDP candidate in the state, you cannot come around also saying that you support the candidate of um, uh, NMPP or the candidate of Labour Party at, at, at presidential level. When you have, it's either you're a party or you're not a party. If you are not satisfied with the party, you leave the party and uh, and um, join any other party of your choice. By coming to say you are you throw your weight behind. And this presidential candidate, and then when it comes to governorship and other election, that yeah, you're going to, uh, they should vote for PDP. That is anti party. And I think the, uh, the PDP is giving uh, Wiki a lot of uh, room. And, uh, and it's not, it, it, it's, it's, he's practically demarcating the party. And the other they will be able to resolve this issue as quickly as possible, the better for them. Come to think of it, uh, we know that similar things. Happened in 20, was it 2020, 2003? Yes, I think 2003. During the second term of uh, president, former president, Ulysses Basanjo, where the people of the Southwest, who did not vote Basanjo in 1999, decided to embrace their own and uh, was able to take him and embrace him as their candidate. That was the period of 80, uh, I think 80 years, 80 or 80, maybe. I, I can't remember which of them. And what they said that, that the, the Southwest will vote for of Bosanjo during the presidential um, election, and the Southwest should vote for AD or ACM, whichever name it was then, 
during the gubernatorial election. And we saw what happened. That was a bank bank effect. All the AD or ACN governors in the Southwest lost that their governorship to PDP. As the only person standing was uh, Bola Admin to me. So I, I hope that um, Wiki and his cohorts, the G5, know what they are doing. And and whoever rides at the back of the on the back of a tiger or a lion most ultimately ends up in the stomach. I hope they are strategically positioned to be able to tell their people to distinguish from voting for one particular party or the other through presidential, governorship, and House of Assembly member, so that you don't have lightning striking at the same spot a second time. All right, An interesting one. Let's move over from that paper to um, the situation with uh, the People's Democratic Party. I'm sure you understand that political stories uh, taking the crux of uh, the uh, the attention these days. The nation is focusing once again on the People's Democratic Party. They've really given us uh, the nation is a really uh, constant conflict, recovery, like I always say, on the crisis in the PDP. But this time it is the NMPP candidate, Rabi Kwankwaso, who we just talked about, who is giving uh, his own calculation as to why the People's Democratic Party, he says, uh, will lose in 2023. And he says nobody can win the presidential poll uh, without Lagos, Kano, and Rivers votes. And for that, he thinks uh, the PDP will not win in 2023. What are your thoughts? Apart from Kano, Kano, Lagos, and Rivers as well. These are just uh, political talks. I totally agree that these three states have the bulk vote uh, when it comes to election. But don't also forget that states like Kasina also have very, very huge votes as well. Uh, some other states, especially in the north. Um, political calculation, yes, is talking about PDP. Um, but I think it should be marketing in the PDP the more, rather than talking about other political parties. Can he, can he, Wapansu, apart from winning Kano, win Rivers, win Lagos, and win states in the south, uh, in, in the south, south, southeast, and even the southwest? Um, his, his party is presently being positioned as a northern party, and that is a big problem for him, as far as I'm concerned. He needs to change that mindset and make it more national in nature. Just witnessing WK and telling Nigerians that PDP will not win is neither here nor there. Um, it, to me, I've always said that this race is going to be a three-horse series. It's between the candidate of APC, PDP, and that of the Labour, NNPP, NNPP, yes. Um, it's not within the means, and uh, it's just an outsider. I may be wrong, um, but as a political scientist and a, a journalist, that is the way I see it. So I think the NNPP candidate should be trying to tell Nigerians why they should vote for him and his candidature and his party, rather than looking for ways of marketing other political parties. All right, but, but if you look at that, he's not saying that he, he will win. I think he's saying that PDP won't win. Yes, that's, it's the same thing I'm saying. I say he said PDP and I asked, will he win? Don't forget that he said, if you also read some of those stories, today, he, yesterday, he said he regretted not going to alliance with uh, P2P. I'm sure you must have seen that story. Yeah. That he regretted not going to alliance with the Labour Party uh, uh, presidential candidate. Don't forget that at the point, at the beginning, P2P had to, he met with P2P several times when he lost out with. Um, uh, uh, former Kano um, State uh, Governor Shekarao. So he was looking for uh, alliance and he met with Peter Bain and they thought that they were going to have, but he was insisting that he was going to be the presidential candidate of the NNPP, that Peter Bain should take up the uh, vice presidential candidate and he, that is more popular than Peter Bain. But from what we are seeing today, you cannot put his way, way miles, miles apart from Peter Bain, who seems to be running a very good race now. And it's regretting, and that is politics for you. So that's why I say that let's him concentrate on way voters for his party and NPP and just stop this uh, issue of uh, double talk on uh, marketing or that. Yeah, yeah, but, Although it's part of but, politics. But you, Chris, Chris, you've said you've said that Kwanko so won't win. Okay, again, he should focus. But the, the question now is, will the PDP win? Looking at what he has brought out as his own formula, Lagos, Rivers, uh, Kano. It, it, it seems to be saying Atiku may not win those states and therefore likely will not win the election. If the, if the G5 reconciled with Atiku tomorrow, you'd be shocked that PDP will win reverse states. That's for sure. 
<laughs> okay. If they don't reconcile, I don't know. Are you sure we're not tending no. towards an APC victory? Um, looking at what mm. may be happening in Lagos, in River State. Because what, what I tell people is, Wiki would not come and announce to the public, you know, who he's supporting in front of uh, the press when he's commissioning a project. These are things you discuss at 12 midnight when nobody is watching behind closed doors. Kofi, in politics, 24 hours is too long for politicians. 24 hours is too long for politicians. Anything can happen. You cannot just say it. All right. You ask me a question, will that article win? I don't know what article is going to win. 2023 election is going to be the most first, firstly uh, fought um, election. Before it used to be a two-way race. It used to be a two-way race between the APC and PDP. And I've told you now that the Labour Party is in the midst. That initiative is going to change a lot of dynamics. The PD, um, um, South East used to be um, uh, more like a, 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 a home a, a home run for the PDP. Now, with PDP in the South East, it might not be that. South South used to also be the, a, a home run for the PDP. But you see what is happening, some of the um, South, uh, South South, I mean, some of the governors of the South South are now in APC. And if you also look at what happened in South South, uh, South West a few months ago, we had the PDP won the gubernatorial election in Oshu State. Nobody ever believed that PDP could win that election. So what I'm saying in essence is that it's going to be a tight race. For me, the three parties for now is the APC, the PDP, and Labour. They are the front runners. Outsiders may be MPP, NMPP, but uh, except between now and January, something is, that is what is going to happen. All right. Uh, Chris, just the last one, because we're out of time. This day is uh, floating a story on its front page uh, regarding the Nara redesign. It's saying the CUPP, they've been vocal recently, the Conference of uh, United Political Parties, or whatever it's called. They're saying... Uh, that there are moves by lawmakers to scuttle the Naira redesign initiative. Is that something you you can understand? And can you come up with reasons why this, possible reasons why this may be? The president has given his word that he's given the go-ahead to the central bank to redesign the Naira. And that is the that is the sample of authority you need. Once the chief, um, the uh, president and commander in chief has given that go ahead. No other politician can revoke it. Don't forget that the central bank, the laws established the, the central bank, gave it that awesome power to be able to resign, reissue, and all the rest of them. It is within the, the, in the CBA and Act, um, if, uh, uh, gave them that power. An attempt by the Minister of uh, uh, Finance to scuttle that, um, that uh, issue. Uh, uh, was uh, quickly, we do not forget when she said, went to the National Assembly and said that she was not aware, she's not part of it. But the president, within 24 hours, came back to reform the fact that he has given the Central Bank um, of Nigeria the, the power to go ahead. And since then, have you heard anything from the finance minister? Everybody has kept behind that, um, uh, that policy. And I can rest assured that within the next, uh, within the next, uh, it's on the 15th of December that money will be rolled out. But what the National Assembly has been doing in these past few days is trying to see if there can be an extension of time for um, the extension from the 31st of January uh, sign-up dates for, uh, for all old Naira to be um, brought back to the port of the various bank. Um, the CBA has not come out to say anything about that. But for now, uh, that policy is, uh, is constant and uh, sacrosanct the Naira will be rolled out on the 15th of December. And by the 31st of January, except there is any other directive, every old Naira in Nigeria, within the 500, uh, 1,200 denomination, must return back to the banks. Don't forget the banks have already started uh, putting logistics in place. Most of them are now opening on Saturdays to be able to collect these funds. All right. Uh, the CBN is saying that they will be launching a countdown a clock for that one. So at least we'll not forget <laughs> that that is going to happen. Thank you so much for your time, Chris. <laughs> Thank you so much. I hope you've, you've done the needful. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you cashless as I am? I, I'm more than cashless as you are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, so, Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Thank you very much for your time. You too. Bye. Thanks. All right, we have more discussions ahead. We're looking at Nigeria's fintech space and, of course, uh, looking at the growth of the fintech uh, space in the country. In particular, looking at a forthcoming fintech summit. We have guys from 
Tech Point Africa joining us. Please stay.